gold and silver will be will overcome the cartel, and it'll probably mean the end of the cartel. It's just a matter of when. Now, if we look at J.P. Morgan's position in silver, it looks like they're expanding their short position again. Can you comment on that at all? Yeah, yeah, and see how how well they've done. Yeah, let me point out one thing about these COTs reports, okay? I've been watching the COT report every freaking week since 2002. And I can tell you that between 2002 and 2000, let's say, seven, it was a dead indicator. I mean, there was no doubt that every single time that the, that the short position, the commercial position was building, that gold and silver would be smashed. And every t- single time it contracted, which would be after a smash, it would go right back up. And I'm trying to tell people now, there is zero correlation right now, and I mean zero, between the COTs and the gold and silver prices. Of course, they still short them on the way up, and of course, they, when, when the prices are going down, they buy them. But there's no real correlation anymore. Just Look, I mean, the short position has been going up for, by the commercials, what, for two months now? And what has silver done? It's gone from 26 to 35. So what, so what are we supposed to say? Well, yeah, it means it's going to fall. Yeah, eventually it will fall. But the point is that, you know, J.P. Morgan, the COMEX, there is, there is no business there going on. It's simply a matter of naked shorting as much as they can. And eventually they'll lose. So I'm not worried about the COMEX at all. Just like people, you know, at one point they worried about the dollar index. The dollar index has been in the same trading range now for seven years. And still you'll see commentators, actually eight years, and those, the commentators will still say, well, gold's up or down because of the dollar. The COMEX, the dollar, mean nothing as far as those statistics. The cartel attacks every day. It doesn't matter if they're shorting or if they're covering. They're always going to be there at 3 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 20, 10 o'clock, and 12. And net, net, they're losing. They will keep trying, but they're getting the mar- uh, diminishing returns of what they're doing, and they're going to keep losing. Well, Andy, you're absolutely on fire. And, uh, you know, the reason we love speaking with you so much is because you're so knowledgeable and you cut right to the brass tacks. I mean, you don't beat around the bush. Let me ask you about something that's a little on the fringe, Andy. I've talked about it with others. Zero Hedge covered it briefly last week. We saw $6 trillion in bonds seized in Zurich by Italian police. Now, what was noteworthy to me about that, and Zero Hedge commented, and um, rightfully so, the fact that these $6 trillion in quote-unquote fake bonds we're in these very uniquely patinaed, authentic, uh, apparently authentic Federal Reserve chests. Have you been following that story at all? And if you have, can you give us your thoughts on it? Yeah, I've uh, I follow every story, and you know I, I have a love hate relationship with Zero Hedge because I, I feel that they are the best financial website in the world. Uh, the only problem is they don't seem to want to go to the most important issue of gold manipulation. But either way, yeah, I've been following that story. It's one of many. Uh, true conspiracy stories in that there's really no way of under, of knowing exactly what's true and what's not. Uh, yes, I was told uh, it says that they were Chicago Federal Reserve containers where they were. I be- that's probably the part I believe the most because anything that has to do with the U.S. government and the Federal Reserve is uh, is untrustworthy. And, you know, if they did actually put another $6 trillion into circulation, what's the difference? They put $16 trillion into circulation in those secret loans we just found about. How, how many how many other trillions are out there that we don't know about? Uh, so you know, well, I don't think we'll ever know exactly what happened there. But you know, that's the problem with paper money. You can make all of it that you want, and gold you can't. So at some point, all these shenanigans will end, and all the conspiracy theories will end, and we'll look up, and gold will be ten thousand dollars an ounce, and the dollar will be crashed, and it won't matter how many treasury bonds they print. Okay, I want you to comment on this, too. The other night I was watching an episode of this new Smash show uh, on, I think it's on Nat Geo, called uh, Doomsday Preppers. And one of the preppers in this particular show I was watching was worried about a worldwide financial collapse, or more specifically, a financial economic collapse here in this country. And at the end of that particular segment with that particular prepper, the uh, the graphic came up supplied by Nat Geo and a voiceover that says the reality of a financial collapse in the United States experts say is highly unlikely and then the graphic said that there's only two trillion dollars including all checking accounts of money in circulation. You want to comment on that? That felt like an awful lot of misinformation to me at the end of that segment. Right. Well, I mean, who knows how much money is in circulation? And plus, like you know, the government can define it however they want. They can. You know, they have M1, M2, the, the no longer M3, and then what I call M4, which is all the stuff they don't tell you about. And then they got all kind of semantic definitions, uh, you know, what is circulation, meaning is it actually a dollar bill versus digital. 
And, uh, you know, again, anyone who's trying to, to give you numbers of what kind of money is out there probably has wrong information. I go to John Williams at Shadow Stats uh, for the uh, projected M3, uh, which is probably about as close as anyone has out there. But then again, when, when you read that there's $16 trillion of secret loans out there, it's like, what's the point? You know, all these years, the, the World Gold Council has been putting out their stupid central bank uh, gold holdings, and, you know, and they make their, their supply and demand projections based on it. And then all of a sudden, the Chinese will say, oh, yeah, we own 1,100 tons instead of 600 tons. So the point is, all the numbers that are out there are fake. The fact is that there's enough overt printing of money by everyone to know that the, that, the, that the ratio of gold to paper is out of whack. But who knows what the real number is? It's probably exponentially more uh, than, than, uh, than we know about. Before we wrap up, just a couple more points. When you mentioned John Williams, you know, when I got into this doing videos, even just a couple years ago when I did the silver perspective, uh, John Williams was talking about uh, the inflation-adjusted all-time high in silver if you use the M3, M4 numbers of being about $456 an ounce. He's now redone that calculation. He says it's closer to $517 an ounce for silver. And, you know, as you and I both know, James Turk has been saying uh, for almost a decade that we will see by the year 2014 to 2015 Four hundred dollar silver and eight thousand dollar gold. And you know what's funny, Andy, is that we're already sitting here in 2012. It seems like in my mind's eye when I talk about these things, 2013, 2014, that's still five years away. It's right around the corner. Yeah, well, it's like stock multiples. You're looking 12 months ahead, and then as soon as you get into January of 2012, you're already looking at 2013 earnings, and it's you know becomes a lot closer. Uh, but as to you know the price of, of gold and silver. You know, my target, look, I just put out a piece two days ago or three days ago called The Ultimate Quadruple Top Breakout. It's, so far, it's the most popular piece that I've written because it, it takes the chart of silver, the inflation-adjusted chart that goes back to the 1400s. Uh, you know, the high price back then was about 800 bucks an ounce. Uh, and, uh, and it shows how, how the quadruple, you know, we've had, we were at $50 an ounce up until 1900 or so when all the major uh, discoveries of silver were made out west in Nevada and Idaho and the like. You know, all that supply is gone now. Okay. And then, then on top of that, you know, we have uh, silver returning to its monetary role while at the same time being the second most uh, used commodity on earth. So I think you go back to that $50 price from, uh, from 1900 and the $50 price from 1980 and the $50 price from last year. And, uh, and you're talking about the potential for the biggest, you know, 100 year plus quadruple top breakout in history. And I think it'll easily take it just on technicals, something like that, to the $800 price we had, you know, 500 years ago, uh, when gold, when gold and silver were the only true money in the world. But you know, that's just one way of looking at it. I just look at, you know, I'm not the only person. Sinclair, uh, Mike Maloney, and others have looked at just the overt money printing that we've seen, and again, just the overt part. And you know, if you do the balance of the balance sheet to the uh, to the gold, like Jim Sinclair uh, w would say, you get you know, 15 to 20 thousand dollars ounce of gold. My silver price target is based on the ratio. It was 15 to 1 gold silver or gold silver ratio for for the past, you know, for 500 years or so. Since the uh since we've had the we went off the gold standard, it's been so manipulated that the, the average has been 50 or 60. And now that all the all the, you know, now that 15 to 1 ratio was based on the amount of gold and silver produced. It used to be 15 ounces of silver for one of gold. Now that ratio is closer to 8 to 9 ounces because it's becoming more scarce. Plus all the silver is gone while all the gold is still there. So I think 15 to 1 ratio is a, is a no-brainer for the future. And pro I mean, it could overshoot as low as 5 to 1 if you have a real shortage of silver. And therefore, with my gold price product production, I get a thousand, to one thousand to four thousand dollar price target for silver. Uh, sometime, like you said, potentially not as far in the future as people would think. Wow, that's incredible. Well, you know, that's why we love speaking with you, Andy. I mean, what that's. Talk about thinking outside the box. A one thousand to four thousand dollar an ounce price projection for silver is—it uh, sounds astounding. But if you've done the research, if you've—if you spent the time actually working the numbers, taking a look at the, the supply and demand uh, issues and the paper suppression that we talk about endlessly, which is just so critical to understanding the big picture, that's realistic. And I know people think that's pie in the sky. It sounds crazy, but I'll tell you what's crazy is this government and governments around the world printing in perpetuity uh, money out of thin air. Okay, last question. This one is a little bit out there, and a simple Google search ought to give us the answer. But this one comes from Tony, and you know he's worried about a meltdown in this country. What if he wanted to leave the country? Are there any laws in place that would limit the amount or the ability of a person to take physical metals on an airplane to get out of the country? 
Uh, well, I mean, of course, you have to declare, I think, you know, $10,000 of uh, currency on you. And there are differences in the declaration value because, uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to get this wrong, but I think if you have a $50 gold coin, then it can be called $50. But again, you know, even if you're going to do that, you know, taking a lot of gold out of the country uh, on an airplane could be a bit dangerous. I do know one person who has told me he did that, and at some point uh, a few years later, the the feds were at his house asking him questions. So, you know, it's if you're going to move out of the country, you have to you have to really, really do your due diligence. I can't say I have the answers. I haven't thought of leaving the country, uh, but there's. You know, I can say that the controls against uh, taking money out of the country are, are, are limited now compared to what they're obviously going to be in the future when things get really bad. Yeah, absolutely. And with the Patriot Act and everything else in place, due diligence is the key, because the last thing you want to do is show up in good faith at the airport. Even if you just, let's say you're going to try to leave leave uh, the country with $50,000 in gold, the last thing you want them to do is seize it and lock it up in a court case, because you'll probably never get it back. That's right. Well, Andy, uh, thanks so much. Why don't you tell folks again how they can find your excellent work on the Internet? Let's get pe- let's get people linked over there right away. Right. You go to milesfranklin.com, and the front page in the top right there's a box. You get in. I write five days a week for free, as does David Sheckman, the founder of our firm, where, you know, this is what we pride ourselves on at Miles Franklin in education. And uh, you can call me anytime or email at ahoffman at milesfranklin.com. Let's push a little further on that, Andy. Do you have a phone number people can call? Because I know that unlike some of the other online dealers, people don't put their orders through uh, in electronic form at Miles Franklin. Sure. Well, if you want to talk to one of the brokers at Miles Franklin, uh, you'd call 800-822-8080. But if you want to call me personally with questions, it's 720-350-4130. Yeah, you can't get that kind of access from AppMex or Gainesville or anybody else, guys. Andy Hoffman and Miles Franklin, thanks so much for your time. I mean, when I say I appreciate it, I'm understating it. We really all truly appreciate your expertise and the fact that you're in our camp on this thing. Because like I always say, we're all in this mess together. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you, the service that you're doing is uh, is equally important, Sean. Thank you. Jeez, it's, uh, I'm blessed to even be a part of it. All right, Andy, until we speak again, thanks and take care. Okay, you too. Thanks for tuning in, and check out sgtreport.com for all the latest. Good night.